I have answers. We're talking about visa delays, 221G, and administrative processing. And today the question comes from one of the members of our Facebook group. It's a free to join. I encourage you to join if you're interested in these sorts of things. Um, and uh, let's get down to it. So pardon me. So the question says, I, I can't pronounce the person's name. It's in, a, it's in another language, so forgive me. It says, hey, Josh, um, if you can, please answer my question. I am a petitioner green card holder. I filed for my spouse and kid. In 2019, we uh, March, we had an interview at Uzbekistan Tashkent Embassy and, um, and uh, was refused under Section 212 A4A A4A public charge. They asked for a tax transcript for 2019. This year is 2020, February, and I sent them the transcript for 2019. And after a couple of weeks, March 9th, 2020, I received an email that states that they refused under 221G and put us under administrative clearance. So the questions are one, administrative clearance. Is that the same as administrative processing? Two, is there any approximate time for this? And three, is there anything you can do and are we in the safe side? Um, so let me get to the question. Oh, there's also a, an email attached here. It says, thanks for your email. The, cons the consular officer reviewed the financial documents submitted and now your case is refused under 221G um, and the consular may require further documentation uh, to conduct an administrative check. In addition, the consular officer requested additional administrative clearance. What does all this mean? Uh, let me give you my opinion on that. If you don't know me, I'm Josh Goldstein. I'm an immigration lawyer in Los Angeles, and I help people and families get their visas out of administrative processing. I hate administrative processing, and I sue consulates. I file writ of mandamus lawsuits against consulates around the world, and I do it to help people just like you, people who are frustrated, who are sick and tired of waiting. They're sick and tired of be being given these meaningless uh, messages from SEAC and by email. And today I'm going to answer these questions. Um, okay. Number one. It, well, first let's give let's get some background. Um, if you don't have your visa in your hand and you've had an interview, then there's only two possibilities. One is that the consulate has denied your case. It's over. They are not going to give you their visa. And the, give you the visa. And the other possibility is that your case is subject to some sort of a delay. And the, this, this delay has many different words that they use to describe the delay. One phrase they use is 221G. The other is administrative processing. And another one is refused. Refused sounds a lot like denied, but refused does not mean denied in this case. It means that everything is pending but they're waiting to make a decision. And I think that's exactly what's going on here. What is administrative clearance? So this email says, uh, uh, your case, in your case, the consular officer requested an additional administrative clearing, clearance. What does that mean? I have no idea. It's meaningless. It's meaningless. It's a meaningless phrase. It's, I consider administrative processing to be a meaningless phrase. They don't tell you what they're checking. They don't tell why, you why they're checking. They don't tell you how long it's taking. They don't give you any information about the nature or the cause for the delay. Anytime you hear the word 221G, administrative processing, administrative clearance, uh, all you need to know is that this is a mysterious delay. That's it. That's what, what the plain language of this means. It also says that the consular officer may require further documentation to make a decision. So what this tells you is that a decision has not yet been made. Everything is pending. In federal court, when I file a mandamus lawsuit, often the lawyers will try to, the lawyers for the department, for the consulate, will also often make the argument that the visa has been refused and therefore the case is mute because nothing else ha needs to be done. It's been denied. But Time and again, this argument has been dismissed because it's, it's, it's a stupid argument, really, because if the visa were denied, why would they send you, send you an email that says that they're going to request further documentation to make a decision? It clearly tells you that no decision has been made. So to answer your question in short, administrative clearance is a meaningless phrase. It doesn't mean anything. 
Uh, it doesn't, whether it's something different than administrative processing, nobody knows. Um, the second question you have, is there any approximate time for this? One of the hardest things about administrative processing is that they never tell you how long something is going to take. They never give you any estimated time frame. In fact, when they notify you that you're in administrative processing, they tell you straight away, there is no time limit for this. There's no estimated time frame for processing. They also don't publish any information about the processing times for administrative processing. So the answer to your question, is there any approximate time for this? The answer is, who knows? I mean, look, you've already waited for, for quite some time. You had the interview in March of two, 2019. Well, actually, it was just this month. So we don't really know how long it's going to take. Um, and then it says, is there anything we can do? Are we on the safe side? So I have a few things I can tell you. First of all, the, the solution to administrative processing, there's basically two things you can do. The first is that you can try and wait it out. Um, and that works for some people. Sometimes you can wait and get a decision on your case. The second thing you can do, and this is where I come in, is that you can file a writ of mandamus lawsuit. You can sue the consulates. And if you sue the consulates, you're very likely to get a decision quickly. Most people who hire me, who file writ of mandamus lawsuits, get a decision in a couple of months. Um, so that's what you can do. You can take action. If you're sick and tired of waiting and you want to get your wife and your kids back quickly, you can challenge this delay. You can sue them, and I can help you do it. Um, the other thing that I want to tell you is um, you mentioned that there was an issue about public charge. So I just want to say a few words about that. First of all, public charge is a new thing that the Trump administration start, came up with. It's not a new thing. It's been, a, it's been in the immigration laws for many years. But a, a reinterpretation of public charge was created and came into effect very, very recently uh, by the Trump administration. And essentially what they're trying to do is they're trying to check to see that the person who's seeking a green card is not going to go on welfare or take public benefits. And the factors that they look at, first of all, you're going to have to fill out a form called uh, the DS-5440. Um, so if you haven't done that, take a look at this questionnaire, go through it. Um, if you have questions, let me know, but you're going to need to tackle that. And the second thing to keep in mind is that there are many different factors. Before the public charge rules that the Trump administration was, uh, that the Trump administration put into effect, the only thing that we'd really look at is the affidavit of support. The affidavit of support was the only thing that we had to deal with. And now we have to deal with the uh, DS-5540, and they're looking at these factors, age, health, family status, assets, resources, and financial status, education and skills, pers prospective immigration status, expected period of admission, and an affidavit of support. So it's not just the affidavit of support. It's these other factors. You have to fill out the DS-5540, and you have to go through that. Um, cases can be denied uh, for uh, under the public charge grounds, but I don't think that's what's happening here. Uh, what's happening is they're just asking you for financial documents, which you've provided, and they're making you wait. I hope this answer was helpful. If you have questions about this or anything else, please let me know. I'm here for you. And if you're sick and tired of waiting and you want to explore a mandamus lawsuit, message me and let's get started on this. Let's figure out a solution for you. Take care, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video.